Dear students, in this screencast video lecture, we are going to see the importance of gravimetry, turbidometry and nephelometry in the measurement of the microbial growth. In that first, we try to look at the gravimetry. In a previous screencast lecture itself, I have told that the fungal biomass is measured mainly by gravimetry analysis. This gravimetry analysis is one of the important practicals also for this paper. Here, we try to understand the theoretical background about the gravimetry. It's basically an analytical procedure for quantitative determination of an analyte based on the mass of the solid. In microbiology, the growth of fungi can be indirectly estimated by weighing the biomass that have been obtained during their growth. That is, estimating the amount of mycelium or hyphae that have been formed during the growth of the organism. In this, the cells are grown, fungal cells are grown in known volume of the broth, mainly in the potato dextrose broth and they are separated from the broth by using a simple filtration. The collected mycelial strands are weighed and subjected to drying in a hot air oven. By calculating the differences that have been existing with the wet weight and the dry weight of the fungal biomass, the exact weight of the biomass can be calculated. Next, we look at the explanation related to the turbidometry and nephelometry. Both these are a simple and relatively accurate method for determining cell concentration. Turbidometry and calorimetry methods mainly measures the cell density of the microbial cell, mainly the cell population, and they may not count the exact number of cells that have been present there in the sample. These methods Monitor the changes of the population by measuring the opacity or turbidity of the growth medium that mainly resulted due to the increase in the cell numbers. Now we look at the point specific to turbidometry. Why turbidity is caused? It is caused mainly by suspended or colloidal particles that have been present in the water. The particle present may be of an inorganic or organic nature. Inorganic refers to clay, silt, mud, silica, rust, calcium carbonate particles that may be present. And the organic components here refers to the algal multiplication, bacteria and even direct presence of certain organic compounds. These particles absorb and they can able to scatter the light. So, turbidometry and nephelometry are two similar methods that are used to measure the turbidity. A turbidometer is an instrument that measures the intensity of the light passing or transmitted through or absorbed by the sample. This is a line diagram showing the various parts of a turbidometer, where from a light source is present and where a sample is being kept and finally, how a phototube have been associated there with measuring the transmitted light. The principle of turbidometry is applicable with these two instruments. One is a calorimeter and spectrophotometer that usually involved in measuring the amount of transmitted light relative to that of the incident light. First, we look at the points related to calorimetry. It uses color filter for isolating the different wavelength from the light sources. In microbiology experiments, correct filter should be chosen for each culture medium you are using to measure. The ideal filter is the one where the medium shows a minimum absorption or transmittance. This meaning that the filter selected for use with a particular culture medium is that which minimizes the effects of the color of that solution. In general, for measuring the bacterial growth, a 620 nanometer wavelength is commonly used. The next one is the points related to spectrophotometer, which is also a turbidometry measurement commonly used there in the microbiology to measure the protein content and the number of cells there in the sample surround. Here it uses a monochromator whereas in colorimeter it uses different filters there. Thus in a spectrophotometer the wavelength at which this minimum absorption takes place will be chosen when you keep the sample. The spectrophotometer is capable of isolating a much narrow band of light than that of the filters that are commonly used there on the colorimeter or photometer. And the purity of light available there in the spectrophotometer as a monochromator is having a better absorption compared to that of the light separated through filters there in the colorimeter. Thus, using spectrophotometer, the percent transmittance is determined more precisely 
Next, we look at the points related to nephelometry. It is the one which measures the intensity of the scattered light. So, in the nephelometry, the light scattered by the suspended particles in a sample is getting measured. The instrument used for this purpose is nephelometer or nephelometric turbidimeter. So, the line diagram of that instrument has been shown there in the right hand side where you can able to see the amount of light that have been scattered by the suspended particles are collected at an angle of 70 to 75 degrees. Nephelometry is more sensitive when you are using dilute suspension for measurement. Nephelometry is commonly used to measure the immunoglobin level that have been present there in the samples. Finally, we look at the advantages and disadvantages of this turbidometry and nephelometry. The advantages are they are more sensitive than the other methods. They can be used to detect even the low concentration of active material present in a sample. They can be employed without suitable standards also. A large number of microorganism, a large number of microorganism may be screened in a relatively short period of time using this method. The disadvantages are as following. Highly turbid or colored solutions may always interfere there with the determination of the cells there in the samples. Some other substances which may be of organic or inorganic nature that have been associated there in the sample solutions may also interfere with the assay and it can able to reduce the accuracy of the assay.